Hello everyone, this is Taikin Senpai again again with another tutorial on how to make Super Mario Brothers. Uh, sorry for the delay, there's been a lot of issues with uh, my mic not working and trying to switch over so it doesn't switch over to another broadcaster desktop capture because it, I believe it or not, I did this episode about four or five times and had so many mic issues that I had to go back and delete and do it over and over and over again. But I do appreciate the patience and uh, the support. And we're going to continue on. Um, as you notice, we're not using the original Super Mario Brothers sprites anymore because uh, if you guys remember the last episode, and I told you there was that you need to space out your sprites so you won't have a lot of cl uh, clipping issues. Well, that's exactly what happened. So uh, before I make the tutorials, I make the levels itself before. And so I can make sure that it works before I start recording so I don't go in that uncomfortable, oh no, this is not working, let me try editing it over and over again so you guys can watch me do my mistakes. I don't want that to happen, I just want to make sure that you guys get the right information. So that's another reason why we're switching over to the Super Mario DS sprites, which are also really cool. And we're going to just go ahead and use the DS and make the first level of this game because in the end of the day, a Mario game is a Mario game. So uh, the way where you download is over here at the Super Mario Scratch MIT edu, And uh, even though this is no credit given, I'm giving you credit 20, 30 for making this awesome sprite sheet. So basically you go over here and you go see what's inside. And you go over to one of the sprites over here, you right click, and you do save to local file. And that's pretty much it. So, um, as far as the animation goes, it's the same thing as, it, as you watched in the last tutorial. Let me just plug the animation over here. The difference is there's more sprites now that you have to deal with. And you adjust it according to the sample size and how fluid it looks with the walking or running in this case. You can see that, you know, kind of the same thing. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So the last project we actually made our animations, but we didn't go ahead and make like inputs or anything to make it move and make sure how the player moves Mario. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do quite a bit of scripting. So get your scripting fingers ready for this and let's get on to the scripting part of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our script folder. As you can see I made one already but we're going to make another one. We're going to create a new C sharp script and call it player movement. And we're going to open that up now. There we go. Did I move it? Here we go, our player movement script. So let's get started. Let me just save this recording real quick. Okay. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make our functions. Functions is basically everything Unity engine checks. So for example, the Unity engine will check a move speed, a velocity, a jump height, or a uh, animation, or a rigid body. And that's what it's for. So everything above here will be our functions, and everything below here will be our methods. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is make a private rigid body. And if you remember, the rigid body is what is connecting to the player. It's basically the physics. So what we're going to do is make private jibody 2D. We're going to call it my rigid body. My rigid body. There we go. The next thing we're going to make is our move speed. We're going to make this a serialized field. Serialized field meaning that everything, even though um, something would be private, 
it will be still be used in the editor, still be edited in the editor. And what private is, is basically it's a uh, private means that anything that is in the label of private cannot be accessed within other scripts. So if I made a private float, floats being not whole numbers, move speed, meaning that anything that's this, everything that's private here, this cannot be accessed within a different script or edited. Then we're going to make another private float. Move velocity. And we're going to make a new, new serialized field. Private float. Jump height. Then we're going to make another serialized field. We're going to make it private bool. Bool being a true, true or false statement. Grounded. Then we're going to make a private float. Ground speed. Or not ground speed. Um, sorry. Private float false speed. Then we're going to make a public transform. We're going to call it ground check. Oops. Mind the type, not about type key warrior that doesn't know the type. And then we're going to do a public float. All speed. Oh, sorry, we already did that. Never mind. We're going to do a public float ground check radius. Then we're going to do a public layer mask. We're going to call it what is ground. I messed up over here. You want everything after the first letter, the first uh, word to be uh, capitalized after that. And do that and make it body. There you go. Now public meaning, public is everything that is, uh, everything that's public can be edited outside the script and we can make it a reference. So now that's done, we're gonna go to our void start and make our method. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to link our method to our function so everything from this void start can be uh, used in void updates. And before we do that, I actually forgot something. We actually need to make one more function called private animator animation. I'm sorry, my animation. Basically, linking every. This animation is linking everything that we do in our animator to the animation and the script. So now what we're going to do, we're going to make a reference to our rigid body. So what we're going to do is my rigid body equals a component rigid body 2D. Going to put brackets and done. What this means is our method is being used in our rigid body function. It's calling upon that. So we're gonna do the same for animation. So we're gonna do my animation equals a component, a component animator Oh, and I seem to make a mistake there. Actually, I put animation when it should be animator. There we go. All fixed. The next thing we're going to do is make a fixed update. We're going to go under here and do void fixed update. Put squiggly marks there. Basically, this is going to handle the physics of our jumping. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to write rounded equals physics 2D dot over layer circle. Did I say over layer? I mean overlap circle. Overlap circle. And we're going to do ground check. Dot position is ground check radius. What is ground? Then there you go. So basically, when you're grounded, the player is going to check if you're on the ground by the what is it the the ground check, but what is ground and what is ground is the layer mask is basically what the player stands on and if he's if he is he's gonna do if rounded equals two then we're gonna put these squirrely marks then we're gonna do my animation dot set bool grounded which will be a parameter later on is true there you go and we're going to do the same thing again except for our if statement we're going to do an else if statement else if grounded Oops, sorry, I did a mistake there. Else if. No, no, no. Am I right? No, I'm right. Else if. Grounded. Else if. Grounded. Equals false. Then we're going to do my animation dot set bool rounded is false. There we go. So that's going to be our whole jumping there. So if grounded is true, then the player is grounded. But if he's jumping, is false. Pretty much. All right, so to the next thing. Next thing we're going to do is actually our inputs for moving and jumping. And it's probably one of my favorite parts. Uh, because to me, when I'm creating a game and seeing that my players are actually moving, feel like that's a great start because it makes me happy to see my artwork go or not my artwork but just in general so anyways we're going to go to the void update and make a variable a vertical variable and a horizontal variable so let's get started so the first thing we're going to do is make a variable vertical equals input dot get axis and we're going to call it vertical and then after that colon so basically it's going the when you're going the vertical axis say you're pressing space which would be the input and vertical meaning going up so we're going to do another one we're going to do a my animation reference so we're going to do my animation dot set floats is speed and then we're going to do is vertical and that's it so we got a vertical but now we have to do our horizontal unit so what we're going to do it's going to do bare horizontal 
equals endpoints dot dot hit axis horizontal next thing we're going to do is another animation reference my animation dot set float is speed horizontal There we go. So now we got our references and we got everything set up so the player can move. Now let's set the keys to it. So what we're going to do, oh, I'm sorry, before we do that, one more thing. We're going to make a move velocity reference. We're going to do move velocity equals 0f. So now that we have that done, let's start doing our key inputs. So what we're going to do is make an if statement. So if input dot hit key, hit key is right arrow. Oh, I'm sorry. Key code dot right arrow. Now what we're going to do is make spoiler brackets. And we're going to do move velocity equals move speed. So basically, this code prevents you from moving like a soap bar when you finish uh, pressing the key. Because if you actually do uh, what rigid body, or sorry, my rigid body dot velocity. equals new vector two vector two move speed my rigid body dot velocity dot y this will basically make your character move like a soap bar and although this is probably a really good method if you're making a nice level not very good if you're on the grassland so we're not going to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is actually we're going to copy this bit of code. It's going to make life easy on us. Go down to here. So right arrow, we're going to make it left arrow. And so move speed, we could put minus move speed, meaning negative axis. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to make a move velocity connect to the rigid body. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under over here, or is it over there? Bottom. So the next thing we're going to do is go under here and make my rigid body dot velocity my rigid body dot velocity equals new vector two my rigid body oh I'm sorry so what we're going to do next is make a, a reference to the my rigid body function so that we can actually move our player with the physics. So what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to do is make new brackets or squiggly marks and do my rigid body dot velocity. Uh, spell tag in. There you go. Velocity or equals new vector two. Move 
velocity dot my rigid body dot velocity dot y close that in oops oops don't do that there you go perfect so now the player can move left and right now the last thing we need to do here is we're going to make sure that our player mario can jump so what we're going to do is if input dot kick key is kiko dot space and what we're going to do make more squirrely marks what we're going to do is put my rigid body dot velocity and we're going to do is equals new vector 2 same thing is move speed or I'm sorry is actually rigid body actually my rigid body dot velocity dot x comma jump height there we go now we got our Mario moving left to right and he's able to jump so the last thing we need to do is flipping the player so what we're gonna do it's gonna go under here and do my animation dot set float speed math f dot abs then we're gonna do another bracket then we're gonna do my rigid body dot velocity dot x and we're done what does this mean it basically means that if the player is going positive or negative the rigid body the animation will set the player's sprite to flip depending if the player is going positive or negative so we'll see that in a second so we're going to do if that's no no if my rigid body dot velocity dot x is greater than zero. Oh wow. Greater than zero. Oops, sorry, not that. And what we're gonna do is transform that local scale local scale equals new vector three one f one f one f not two f one f then we're done perfect and now we're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna copy this line of code here and make life easy for us Instead of being if, we're going to make it else if. Else if, merge your body dot velocity is less than zero, being the negative axis, then transform dot local scale equals new vector three. is minus 1f, 1f, 1f. And we're done. So that's going to be our last bit of code for this tutorial. And the last thing we're going to do is actually set up the player animation to work. So we're going to do save this, go to our player, and attach this. First, I got to delete the, no, OK. 
So we're going to go to the player. Got to take our player movement script and attach it to the player. So as you can see now, he has new uh, functionality on the script. So we're going to change the move speed to 5, jump height to 2, 2. And we're going to need to make a ground check. Going to make the ground radius 0 0.5. And we're going to have to make a new grounded, new grounded layer. But before that, let's make a ground check. Create empty. Yep, I'm sorry. I went through that too fast. What we're going to do is we're gonna, if we go here, create empty. Press F2 and call it ground check. And attach it to the player. So we're going to go to the player. Grounded. We're going to do a ground check and do ground check. There we go. And that's pretty much it with that part. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to delete this and do it all over again. Apologize. So we're going to go to our player, project, not project, but layers. And we're going to, what you're going to do is go to layers and make a new ground layer. There we go. So we're going to take a bit of pieces of our blocks here. Just drag it to the player so you can have room to walk. Doesn't have to be too good. So let's make this actually 6D. Box collider. Oops. Oh, don't do that. Ah, yeah, there is. There you go. That's how you do it. Now the last part, we're gonna go to our animation animator. We're gonna make a transition from walking to idle. So we make transition, do the same thing here. And I'll show you how to make parameter speed. If you go over here, you make a new float and you call it speed basically. So when you're over in this setting, you have to turn off exit time and fix duration. Let's get to the zero. And speed if speed is greater than 0 0.1, then Mario will be transitioning from idle to walking. But if it's less than 0 0.1, then Mario will transition to idle. So let's test that out. Oops, did I do something wrong? Let's see. Right. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, as you can see, now you move right to left. Unfortunately, Mario's going to be falling for the rest of his life. And there you go. That's how you do it. And uh, thank you for tuning into our tutorial again. Uh, I apologize for taking so long. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you for all the support. And I'll catch you guys.